what they're doing with their money. Resuming debate, reprise de vote, the Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Immigration, Refugees and Citizenship. Merci beaucoup, Madame. Uh, Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. I'm with the member from Fredericton. I'm proud to stand today to speak in support of Bill C-4. Madam Speaker, the war on organized labour is over. Mm -hmm. This legislation will reverse the legacy of the previous government, which rushed through two anti-union measures, Bill C-377 and 525, just prior to the last election. Those measures put in place redundant reporting requirements and made it harder to certify and easier to decertify a union. With Bill C-4, our government will repeal both of these punitive pieces of legislation. The reasons we are doing this, Madam Speaker, are threefold. The old combination of legislation under 377 and 525 was unnecessary, impeded collective bargaining, and was ideologically driven. Madam Speaker, point one, the old legislation was unnecessary. No one asked for Bill C-377 and 525, Madam Speaker. Employees didn't ask for them. Unions didn't ask for them. Even employers were not clamoring for this legislation. These bills constituted a solution to a problem that didn't even exist. Mm -hmm. yeah. The only champions of Bill C-377 and 525 were the previous government itself. The ostensible reason they asserted, Madam Speaker, was that they were trying to promote increased financial transparency and accountability for unions and to inject democratic principles into their processes. This rationale was defective then, and it remains defective now. First, the idea that unions are not transparent, that union members don't get to see the financial statements or expenditures. This information was and has always been made available to union members. Unions are member-based organizations, Madam Speaker, that release information to their members, information that is confidential. My colleagues across the aisle contend that unions are undemocratic organizations. Again, Madam Speaker, that is incorrect. Unions have regular meetings where all members are welcome to participate. These mem meetings en enable members to hold their leadership accountable. Discussion, debate, solutions, and even disagreements occur at these meetings, and all important aspects of a democratic organization occur. Unions also hold votes among their membership. Decisions and directions are made by the members themselves. Executive officers are voted into their positions by the membership, and they can be voted out. And so, again, this is a key democratic principle. I see this with some experience, Madam Speaker. I'm the product of an organized workplace. For the past 12 years before being elected, I served as a civil servant with the Ontario Public Service, speak, uh, practicing law as a Crown Attorney. I have first-hand knowledge of the transparency and accountability parameters by which unions abide. Yet another argument offered by the previous government in support of the old package of legislation was that they represented a modest increase in the financial disclosure obligations for unions. Again, this is incorrect. The reporting requirement in old Bill C-377 calls for at least 24 detailed statements to be submitted by unions of any size, from the smallest groups to the largest national bodies, Madam Speaker. The collection and managing of these submissions would cost the government millions of dollars, $11 million to start the oversight mechanism and $2 million every year thereafter. Those aren't my figures, Madam Speaker. Those come from the Canada Revenue Agency and the Parliamentary Budget Officer. So just so we're clear, Madam Speaker, under 377 and 525, we had the previous Conservative government increasing the size and scope of government and government regulation, adding to the amount of red tape, and more importantly, adding to the amount of taxpayers that they would be required to shell out for such additional bureaucracy. The irony, Madam Speaker, is palpable. Argument number two, the old legislation impeded collective bargaining. And as, as I said at the outset, Madam Ch uh, Speaker, Bill C-525 made it harder to certify and easier to decertify a union. With the new Bill C-4, we are re repealing those provisions. Our government recognizes that certification of a union is an important part of the collecting bargaining process. Madam Speaker, as I mentioned, I spent 12 years as a Crown Attorney that was specializing in the area of constitutional law. Section 2D of the Charter of Rights and Freedoms, Madam Speaker, protects freedom of association. That has been interpreted by the Supreme Court to include, quote, the right to a meaningful process of collective bargaining. 
Why is collective bargaining so important, Madam Speaker, as to warrant constitutional protection? Well, the Supreme Court has explained that in, in paragraph 58 of a decision called MPAO, the court, and I'm citing the Supreme Court, said, quote, the guarantee functions to protect individuals against more powerful entities. By banding together in the pursuit of common goals, individuals are able to prevent more powerful entities from thwarting their legitimate goals and desires. In this way, the guarantee of freedom of association empowers vulnerable groups and helps them work to right imbalances in society. It protects marginalized groups and makes possible a more equal society." End quote. So collective bargaining is important, Madam Chair, Madam Speaker, because it helps to promote fairness and equality. We get that, Madam Chair, Madam Speaker, and we're not going to waste more taxpayer dollars litigating these types of cases in the courts. And on that point, I would simply note that the charter challenge launched by the Alberta Union of Public Employees against the old Bill 377 was suspended immediately upon our government's announcement that we would be repealing the government's punitive <coughs> legislation. But it's not just me, Madam Speaker, that understands the utility of collective bargaining as a vehicle for addressing inequality. It's also my constituents in Parkdale High Park. It's people like Mr. Hassan Youssef, the president of the Canadian Labour Congress, who is my neighbour in Roncesvalles Village and a tireless advocate for workers' rights. It's people like Wyatt Bilger, a hard-working carpenter and resident of my riding and a member of Carpenters Union Local 27. It's people like the countless artists, filmmakers, performers and television producers in my riding who contribute so much culturally to our community who are also proud members of ACTRA, the Alliance of Canadian Cinema, Television and Radio Artists. It's like the hard-working tradespeople and manufacturing employees in Parkdale High Park who are members of Layuna, Unifor and the CAW. All of these individuals and groups appreciate what this newly elected government recognizes, that workplaces which include collective bargaining are a net positive, not a net negative for our communities, Madam Speaker. Argument number three, the old legislation was ideologically driven. There was no rationale whatsoever that informed the passage of Bills 377 and 525 other than rigid anti-union sentiment, Madam, Chair, Madam Speaker. To illustrate this point, look no further than the rushed passage of the bills through Parliament. Bill C-377 was one of four <coughs> bills to get to the Senate just before the writ was issued for the last election. It was expedited through the Senate and was made into law. But one of the four bills which received support from all parties in this chamber was left to die on the Senate order paper in place of passing Bill 377. What I'm speaking about is a bill called C-279. That had been introduced as private member's legislation by my NDP colleague, the member from Esquimalt, Saanich, Souk. Bill C-279 was going to amend the Canada Human Rights Act to include gender identity as a prohibited ground of discrimination. Mr. S Madam Speaker, all parties supported and passed that private member's bill in the House in the 41st Parliament. However, instead of championing that bill in the Senate, the previous Conservative government decided to promote the passage of 377. So they chose to attack organized labor rather than back 279, which would have protected the rights and freedoms of gender and trans variant Canadians who deserve the same treatment and rights as, as every other Canadian. So not only did they attack unions, Madam Speaker, they told trans and gender variant Canadians that their rights were not a priority. Thankfully, Madam Speaker, that was yet another mistake of the Conservatives, which our government has pledged to rectify. Mm -hmm. The commitment to amend the Canada Human Rights Act and to add gender identity as a prohibited ground for discrimination is in the mandate letter for the Attorney General of Canada. We've seen this ideological pattern before, Madam Speaker, in terms of the old war on the environment, the war on the civil service, the war on evidence-based policy, and we've taken stance to reverse all of those previous battles. And now with Bill C-4, our government brings to an end the war on organized labor. Here, here. Bravo. Bravo. The role of this government, of any government, Madam Speaker, is to create jobs. But it's not just about creating any jobs, Madam Speaker. It's about creating good quality, secure, well-paying jobs. We recognize that unions help to do this, that they ensure fair compensation for workers, they promote safety for individuals, that they protect workers' job security and their well-being. <clears throat> Madam Speaker, a secure worker is a more productive worker, and productive workers are good for the economy. We understand this, Madam Speaker. The previous <clears throat> government did not. As I said, the war on organized labor is over. Unions are not the enemy of progress, Madam Speaker. They are a partner in that progress. Our government is committing to working with them, not against them, to further the economic development of this country. For these reasons, I urge the member in this House to vote in favour of Bill C-4. Merci beaucoup. Thank you very much. Questions and comments? Uh, questions?